Hi, this is just a quick video um, because we've had some inquiries regarding the compare and contrast between the HPLC for measuring um, the hotness of chilies and using the chili pot Scoville meter. So first of all, let me start with HPLC, high pressure liquid chromatography. There's a couple of clues in there because the high pressure, what does that mean? That means you've got an instrument that's operating at 5,000 to 7,000 PSI. A car tyre? generally about 32 PSI. So you've got an instrument there that's um, operating at um, you know, sort of 100 times, more than 100 times the pressure of a, you know, of a tire. So you think of a tire as quite high pressure, then no, you know, that's only 32 PSI. A high pressure liquid chromatography can be operating at sort of 5,000 PSI. Um, so the high pressure part is important because high pressure means it's complex. It's not, you know, it's not something. It's not a trivial piece of equipment. Um, the liquid part, you know, the high pressure liquid chromatography. So, in order to run liquid chromatography, you need um, high purity solvents. You know, so you, you know, you buy them obviously from a chemical house. Um, they're not just normal solvents. They're analytical grade solvents, and more than that, they're actually, um, yeah, they're analytical grade. They're very, very high purity, and therefore very high expense. So you and actually, you know, they're not meant to be distributed just to anyone. You really should have a license. You should be storing those kind of solvents, obviously, in a solvent cabinet. Um, you know, it's got to be correctly done. So people say to us, "Well, can you, you know, tell us the difference between the HPLC method and the um, chili pot Scoville meter for measuring the hotness of chili?" So I say, HPLC. A couple of things are in the word: high pressure, liquid, and then the chromatography part is. There's a column um, which is packed full of material and it allows for separation. Um, those columns are going to retail for at least well, around about 500 US dollars, if not more. I'm being quite lenient on how much the costs are here. Um, but high pressure liquid chromatography, 5000 PSI, organic solvents that are high grade organic solvent, solvents. There's a column there that has to be periodically replaced. I think I've been quite lenient in saying it might be about 500 US dollars. So that's the start with HPLC. The other part about HPLC is it can't just be in the field, it can't just be in a workshop, it can't just be in the home, it can't just, it has to be in an analytical lab, really. I mean, this is a, now this is not an HPLC, this is the closest I've had. Like I said, I'll remake the video when I'm actually next to an HPLC. The closest I've got to an HPLC. I've just brought it in for scale. I would say this is half to a, third of the size of a normal HPLC system. I've got it on a bench because I didn't risk it on a table. I can pick it up. Right? I can pick it up. I'm careful with it. So this is not. This is pretty close though in some ways. I'd say half to a third of the size of an HPLC system. An HPLC system, I'm being I'm being modest when I say they're gonna cost sixty thousand upwards or sixty thousand US dollars upwards. So it's high pressure, it's got lots of liquids or organic solvents associated with it. It's got a consumable a chromatography um, associated with it, a chromatography column associated with it is about $500. And then it's big and heavy. And actually it has, it has to be in, realistic, it has to be run by an analytical scientist in an analytical lab. So, you know, it's, it's not trivial. Now, I say all that because then I want to contrast it with the Scoville um, or the chili pot um, Scoville meter. So this is what we've um, licensed at um, the ZP Chile um, group. We've licensed it from the um, University of um, Oxford, the Richard Compton group there. So it's quite simple. We have a little, um, if anyone's familiar with uh, glucose strips and tests for diabetics, we're basically using those principles in this. Um, and one of the things I haven't mentioned actually about the, um, and then it returns a Scoville heat unit. So it's quite easy to use. I think one of the things I didn't mention as well is actually the HPLC methodology is going to take about 20 minutes at least. If it's optimized properly, it will give you 20 minutes um, runtime. Also, HPLC does need calibration routinely. You have to put in standards of known concentrations and get a calibration curve and then you put in your unknown and you look, you look at your unknown relative to the HPLC. So, you know, it's not just a simple 
instrument to use. Um, it's, like I say, you actually need an analytical scientist. So what we're doing at um, Zimmer and Peacock is saying, you know, an instrument that's twice to potentially three times the size of this, which costs $60,000 upwards, which has to run at 5,000 PSI, which requires analytical grade organic solvents to run. We're replacing that with uh, something, that's something that's small, easy to use. Um, um, so it's that, that's, that's my kind of compare and contrast between, you know, um, the Chili Pot's Scoville meter and the um, HPLC method. So really, if you have any questions, um, I'll put a little contact us um, link down below um, and contact us at the ZP Chili Group. Okay, thanks very much.